Speaking of arcs of fire, there's an interesting thing with fire in the broadsides. Broadsides are fired out the sides of the actual ship themselves. So here we have our two ships and they're fired out the side. Um, however, you get a bonus if you fire through the front or the rear of a ship. It's just like the cannonballs are just sweeping all the length of the, uh, of the uh, ship rather than um, if they just hit the side, there'd be less, less for the cannonballs to just tear through. Yeah, it's called raking. And if, you, if your cannonballs can rake the entire ship, you get a bonus for that. Um, so there is a little chart. So if you're within six inches, it's a four plus to, yeah. to, to actually score a hit. If you're between six and 12 inches, it's a five plus. And if you're between 12 and 18 inches, it's a six plus. After that, you can't do it. However, you get little modifiers. So at the beginning of the game, each of your ships is considered that it has all its best stuff and best gunpowder yeah. in the cannons. They're all ready and willing to fight. So they're a minus one to that. Um, so your first shot, you can you can get a minus one uh, on that, which gives you a real, it's basically like a three yeah. plus. If to, you can catch someone in their, uh, in, in their four arc with that, mm -hmm. you're gonna do some damage. If you catch someone in the four arc, you also get a, a minus yeah. one. So you could actually, if you can get in front of someone and fire your broadside out, to rake them, you could do it on a two plus. Mm. And that is pretty sweet. That is pretty sweet. When you consider the amount of uh, cannon something like the Helden Hammer has, yeah. you, you are going to seriously mess them up with Now that. would probably be a good time to actually show you the actual cards that come with it. So I'll we'll just, just pull out the cards for, the, no, no, we're gonna be showing those in a second. So here we have the card for the Helden Hammer. So you have your speed, which is the number of inches that you can move in this turn. So it, it has a speed of 12 inches. You then have your hull, crew, and broadside. And hull is, it has four points of hull. So as you're taking damage cards, if you pass me some damage cards there. As you're taking damage, when you're lifting off the damage deck, um, you can get special damage, you can get fire, um, or you, in this case, you've got crew. So you would add that crew to this side, and that means now that of your six points of crew, you've used one point of them. And this is how you can gradually dwindle your ship down to the point where it has zero crew or zero hull points left, in which case it, your ship either, is gone. It's either sinking or just floating without it, uh, abandoned in the sea. Either way, you take it off the board. So next up we have the broadside, and the broadside uh, number, in this case six, is the number of dice you actually roll whenever you're rolling off against uh, an opponent to see if you hit it. Yeah. We then have the handling, which is five. Now, the lower the number for handling, mm. the better, because it kind of threw me at first when I saw it, and I was wondering, oh, Same. I don't understand that. But the way it works is the big ships, this is the minimum distance that you must move before you can actually make a turn or a change of direction. So on this ship, it's a five. So you have to move a whopping five inches before you can actually make a change of direction. And it gives this really, really nice effect of you can feel the weight of these yeah. ships. You can feel how heavy and hard the, they are to turn. The heavier, bigger ships are going to be able to take more damage, mm -hmm. deal out more damage, but they won't be able to Maneuver. turn very well. Yeah. And that's why so much yeah. terrain came in the box. Like here we have the Sea Drake, and the Sea Drake has a handling of two. So basically every yeah. two inches you can make a turn. It's just going to nip everywhere. Yeah, it's just going to nip through it. So you could find yourself in battles that you make up yourself where there's just an enormous amount of terrain in one area that you'll just decide, it may not be worth to take my Helden Hammer into that area because it's just going to get crushed mm. and it's going to run aground. Finally, you have your armor save, which on the Helden Hammer is a five plus, which means that any time... Uh, your opponent when uh, actually gets shots through on the broadside, you take your armor save against those. And whatever you don't save, you lift that many damage cards and you apply the effects of those damage cards or you slip the damage mm. cards underneath their corresponding part of the card, of the, the description card. So that gives you an indication of how the actual shooting and whatnot works. The other thing you can do is what's called a boarding action. Yes. Now, boarding actions sound great. If you have two ships that have 
uh, come up against each other. Uh, so, once they've touched, they are now yeah. considered that there's a boarding action. And the first thing you do in a boarding action is you actually get your captains to fight. <laughs> that is a great little thing, in my opinion. You know. So, your captains will swashbuckle, and there's some rules in there. It's a very nice and easy roll-off to, to see which one wins. Um, but they swashbuckle first, and then once that has been resolved, then the crew fight. And... Sam, do you remember how the actual crews fight during a boarding action? Yeah, you uh, take the crew, the number of crew, say if we've got the Sea Drake here, mm -hmm. their crew value is three. Yep. And they're up against the Bloody Weaver. Could you, I'm just going to find their one. I'll just grab you the yeah. Bloody Reaver there. So the Bloody Reaver, I believe, has yeah. a crew of they have seven. Like, they have the best crew value yeah. in the whole so game. So Bloody Reaver has a crew seven. You... Both of you take the number of dice you have for crew. So, mm -hmm. C Drake, you'd be just rolling the three dice. Yeah. And I think a roll of one to four does nothing. Yes. Five to six is considered a victory. Yep. Now, the one who has the most victories, you take, it, you wins, and you take the difference mm -hmm. of, between the number of victories. So, if Sam scores two victories on three yeah. dice, and I score five victories on seven dice, I remove Sam's two dice from my five that I've won, and, and that's then how I have, dam much and I have damage three, and then you left three damage cards basically until you get crew. I think it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there, there you have it. Um, other little interesting aspects of the game. Well, other things that you need to bear in mind. One is the ships are very, very fragile. Okay, let me show you some of the rest of these sprues and things here. So here we have the, basically, two of the sea monsters. The Black Kraken is here. Oh, let me just get that in shot. And here we have the Scabus. Fantastic. Scabrus. Oh, Scabus. English students, I'm supposed to be pedantic. The, the thing about it is, and let me get to the sprue that uh, actually starts to, to worry me. Um, here you can start to see some of these kind of little little mm. details that are, are kind of, you know, just a little bit fragile. Yeah. And that was the thing that caught me about this game, especially when you see this sprue here with the, with the sails and things on it. You could start to get an idea of just how fragile some of these bits actually are. So, hot tip for you. One is all of this stuff will clip together without the need of any glue. Okay, mm. you don't necessarily need glue. So I would experiment with clipping it together first before you glue it. I made the mistake of gluing some bits and then having to prise them apart again. So clip them together carefully. The other thing to get is some of these sails are quite fiddly to actually get into place. So what I would get is a, a pair of needle-nosed pliers that you would use specifically to put the sails down into their little their little holes and sprockets. Maybe we could get a build video of that sometime. We could well try and do a build video because you will be, you will realize once you start building these just how fragile these ships are. Which brings me to my negative factor of this. I believe personally that the models, although beautiful, are too fragile for a game of this type. If you're going to do a limited edition game where I won't be able to pick up any of these models ever again, I would have appreciated them being yeah. just a little bit more robust so as I wouldn't have to sit and repair it, them. You would be so gutted if one of these got broke during your game and you weren't able to replace it again. Um, they all come, all the ships come on bases, and here you can see the actual bases themselves. The bases are a lovely touch because each base is sculpted. Um, which means that you know you have no you have nothing to do other than paint these things. There's very little modeling, if any, that you have to do to this game. Which brings me to the painting side of it. Um, the game looks amazing in its presentation, uh, both in the and book got... and on the website and everything else. However, when it's pulled together and it's built and it's all sitting there and it's drab grey, um, it's it, it's not so amazing, if I'm being honest. Um, it's also quite difficult to see some of the little important parts that you use. So it would have been quite nice, although 
you know, we're hobbyists, we expect yeah. to paint this stuff. It would have been quite nice if some of the parts had been on a sprue of a different color, like a bright yellow color for some of the counters and things like that, which even the different ships, you know, for example, the evil ships being in black plastic mm. and the other ships being in a lighter shade of gray plastic, it would have meant that from day one you could have pulled it out, you could have played the game, you know, with that, without worrying about having to paint them. Because although there's only 10 ships in the box, every ship is They're different. Fiddly. It's not the same as painting an army where you have your core little yeah. uh, selection of paints where you have to paint an entire army and, you know, it's nice and easy. You're following the same steps. Each one of these is painted differently. It's going to take some time to do all this painting. So if you if look at the differences they've done for their painted ones. Well, here we, yeah. here we can have a, a look at some of, the, some of the ships. You can see just how different they actually are. Um, if they had come on slightly different colors of plastic, um, it would have been a nice touch because it would have meant, it would have felt like a game that you could have played straight off. Now, maybe I'm just being oversensitive to the whole thing, but I just think that uh, taking a box like that home to your family, if they had been different colors, it would have made the game a little bit more visually appealing the first time you'd opened it up and put it out until such times as you had it painted. On the other hand, just being plain gray, I suppose it gives you the uh, motivation to get it all painted up. Yeah, unless you're, you. <laughs> unless you're me, where you have just way too much to paint as it is. Uh, this is our final sprue. Uh, it contains one of my favorite ships, which is contains a kind of a wizard who can summon uh, the elementals. Let this me show guy. you that when that's the built. The Flaming Scimitar. The Flaming Scimitar. And the Flaming Scimitar is a gorgeous model. Uh, I'm a big fan of the elemental of fire flying around the side and wind pushing the sails. Fantastic piece of work there. And again, I drop it. Broken. <laughs> I might just say at this stage, um, transporting it once it's mm. built. Um, I put them back in the box to bring them back in here. And the entire way of bringing them back to the studio, I was going, Arr! because they just sit so loosely in the box. However, Battle Foam have come to our rescue really? on this front. Yes. Oh. Battle Foam have developed two pieces of custom cut foam that actually fit the box, which will fit every piece of the game. And you can put it in. When the Battle Foam's in, it sits about three quarters of an inch higher than the box. So whenever you put the lid on, it won't go all the way down. But if you're like me, you'll not care yeah. about that in the slightest. Small price to pay for uh, models not breaking. Exactly. So you'll be able to secure your models in the actual Battle Foam. We have these for Space Hulk. A lot of you guys probably bought them for your Space Hulk boxes. And I would highly recommend you at least check that out for this game because it is uh, about three times more fragile than anything that was in the Space Hulk box. Mm -hmm. So it's well worth checking that out if you want to be able to transport these armies uh, and have them come out in one piece. So in general, the final bit, the final bit is the mat. How can I forget the mat when we've been sitting looking at it? The mat is great, if a little bit light. It's just a little bit light. And the other thing you'll find is that your models have uh, an ability to snag on them. If they're not perfectly clipped right, you can find them snagging on the mat and yeah, taking it with you. One. So it's um, if it had been just a little bit heavier, um, that would have been very much appreciated. However, the detail on them is superb. And the, the rules themselves work v exceptionally well. I especially love the moving the yeah. wind around the outside of the board. That I think is it was, a great detail. I think it was a really nice detail. The game is full of nice details and nice touches. And on a, on a scale of 1 to 10, do you know what? I want to give it a 9 out of 10, which is exceptionally high because I do think it's an exceptionally good game because it's fun mm. and it's simple to play. There's a bit of a a bit of a slog learning curve. Yeah, a bit of a yeah. slog to get through the rules the first time. But once you're through them and you, you start to play through a few turns, the game is very, very simple. Uh, the line of sight rules are very simple. Um, if you have your two ships, um, you basically draw an imaginary line from this point to this point, an imaginary line from that point to that point. 
and if the line is unbroken, yeah. there's complete visibility. If there's if anything, it's broken by anything, if there's anything even slightly partial. in the way, it's then considered a partial. So it's either partial or yeah. full. And it's, it's little rules like that that have just simplified the whole thing. The idea of a multiple combat is very, oh, yeah, very simple can. now too. If you have a multiple combat, you basically just get all of the dice of each side and roll it all together. And whatever the damage this results... This wouldn't be considered a multiple because they're touching different ships. Okay, if yes, he's they, absolutely right. Yeah. This would be considered a battle of its own and that would be considered a battle of its own. However, if I do that... Then it would be considered a multiple. That's yeah. considered a multiple battle. In which case, you just get all your dice, your opponent gets all their dice, you roll them as one, and then you just apply the damage that it's comes back to the board. Thing, thing. Just an enormous fight on yeah. deck. So, uh, as a game goes, I highly, highly recommend it. I'm not sure how much replayability you'll get out of it. There's 12 scenarios. Mm. Um, the, the actual background to the game is, is pretty darn good as well, actually. And uh, I, I did enjoy reading it. And I sometimes cringe a little bit at the background in some of these games because it's always a bit... <laughs> the only bit that made me cringe was the vortex of skulls. Well, it had to have skulls in yeah. there somewhere. But uh, the introduction to the actual ships and understanding mm. what, the, what the whole thing's about is basically just this gigantic grudge between Jago Roth and this Noctilus who killed his family. Funny that, sounds like Gladiator. <laughs> but anyway... You, Husband of a murdered wife. <laughs> you have this... You have this exceptional piece of background. You've got all the models you need. You have 12 great scenarios to run through. Once you're through those 12, you have a limited amount of replayability. You could just pack your ships up uh, on either side, mm -hmm. throw the islands in in some random fashion. You're not going to get unlimited playability out of this. But you know what? That's not what it's about. No. This is about kicking this box open on international speak like a pirate day <laughs> every September and getting the beers in, the eye patches on, and having some fun. So guys, that about wraps it up. I'm sure there's some things that we haven't touched, but this is your opportunity to tell us your thoughts. So post in the comments below, let us know what you've thought. I highly recommend that if you can afford it, and if you find any left, if you and your family enjoy playing games together, go pick yourself up a copy, you won't be disappointed. Mm. Thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing your comments below.